Hi there, Chapter 4, Key. Ralph did not know how much time had passed before he was awakened by the lamp on the bedside table shining down on him. He squeezed himself into the tiniest possible ball, wrapped his tail around his body, and tried to make himself as thin as the apple core. My motorcycle, shouted the boy. Very first thing, somebody stole my motorcycle. Uh-oh, thought Ralph. It won't be long now. Nobody stole your motorcycle, answered the boy's mother from room 216. It's around someplace. You just mislaid it. You can find it in the morning. You had better get got ready for bed now. No, I didn't mislay it, insisted the boy. I put it right here on the table beside my sports car. You'll find it someplace, said his mother, not much interested. Boys were always losing things. While Ralph cowered behind the apple core, Keith opened the drawer of the bedside table and slammed it shut. He jerked back the bedspread, yanked the pillows off the bed, and threw them back. Then he got down on his hands and knees and looked under the bed and the table. Ralph wrapped his tail more tightly around his body. Here it comes, he thought. The boy's face appeared in the opening at the top of the wastebasket. Ralph's heart raced like a motor. Ha, said the boy to himself. Here it is. I wonder how it got in there. His hand came down into the wastebasket to seize the motorcycle and lift it out. Still leaning over the wastebasket, he examined the bent handlebar and the chipped paint. That's funny, he remarked out loud. It must have rolled off, but I don't see how it could. The boy did the natural thing for a boy to do. He looked into the wastebasket again. Ralph closed both eyes tight and waited. He wished he had not eaten so much of the apple core. If he had not been so greedy, the core would have been thicker, and he would have been thinner. Hey, whispered the boy, obviously very surprised. How did you get in here? He was careful to keep his voice lower than the sound of the breezes in the pines outside the window. Ralph did not move. He was grateful to the boy for not touching the apple core, even though it was really no protection at all. Psst, whispered the boy. Are you asleep? Still, Ralph remained motionless except for a slight quiver of his whiskers, which he was unable to control. The boy was silent, but the mouse could feel the rhythmic drafts of his breath. The boy must be thinking, but what was he thinking? That was what was worrying Ralph. No, said the boy to himself. No, it couldn't be. Couldn't be what, wondered Ralph, who was beginning to feel cramped from crouching behind the apple core. Hey, wake up, whispered the boy. That was the last thing Ralph wanted to do. <clears throat> Come on, pleaded the boy. I won't hurt you, Ralph considered. After all, what did he have to lose? If he stayed in the wastebasket, he was almost certain to get dumped into the incinerator. He might as well come out from behind the core. If he did, he might find some opportunity to escape. Cautiously, he moved his head from his paws and opened one eye. The boy was smiling down at him. Encouraged, Ralph opened the other eye and lifted his head. That's the stuff, encouraged the boy. Now come on, tell me. Did you or didn't you ride my motorcycle off the bedside table? This took Ralph by surprise. He had not expected the boy to guess what happened. Well, yes, I guess you, you might say I did, confessed Ralph, rubbing his aching muscles. I thought so. Neither the mouse nor the boy was the least bit surprised that each other could understand the other, Two creatures who shared a love for motorcycles naturally spoke the same language. That must have been some accident. Did it hurt much? Oh, some, answered Ralph with a display of bravado. Anyway, 
I didn't exactly write it. I really coasted it off. The telephone rang and startled me. Now how about getting me out of here? Just a minute, said the boy. How did you get up here in the first place? Climbed, stupid, on the telephone cord. Ralph instantly regretted his rudeness. He had better watch his tongue if he expected any help in escaping from the wastebasket. Oh, of course, said the boy apologetically. I should have thought of that. At that moment, there came a quick knock at the door to room 215 and the rattle of a key. Help, cried Ralph. The maid, don't let her see me. Before the boy could do anything, the maid burst into the room. Oh, excuse me. She seemed surprised to see a boy kneeling by the wastebasket. I've come to turn down the bed. That's all right, said the boy quickly. I can do it myself. Thanks anyway. Thank you, said the maid, backing out of the room. Ralph knew she was not anxious to waste time turning down the bed. As soon as she finished her duties, she was going out to the parking lot to meet a bus boy, a college boy whose job was clearing tables in the dining room. Phew, that was close, the boy seemed every bit as relieved as Ralph. I'll say, agreed the mouse. Keith, called his mother from 216, are you getting ready for bed? Sort of, answered Keith. You better come in our bathroom and take a bath, said his mother. Ah, gee, Mom, do I gotta? asked Keith. Yes, you do, said his father. And don't forget to brush your teeth, said his mother. I won't, promised Keith. Then he whispered to Ralph, you just lie low. I'll hurry and take a bath and get into bed and turn out the light, and after Mom comes and kisses me good night, we can talk some more. Lie low, indeed, Ralph was indignant. He couldn't lie much lower if he wanted to, and he certainly did not want to sit around waiting to talk. He wanted to get out of that wastebasket. Once he was out, he would see about talking, but not before. Ralph could hear the boy splashing in 216's bathtub and then hastily brushing his teeth in 215's wash basin. After this, there was the sound of a suitcase being opened and clothes dropped on the floor. The boy hopped into bed, and to Ralph's relief, the light was turned out. In a moment, Mrs. Gridley came in to kiss her son good night. Night, Mom, said the boy, sounding as if he were already drowsy. Good night, Keith, said his mother. It looks as if we are going to have to stay here for a few days. Your father refuses to budge. That's okay, muttered Keith, giving the impression he was almost asleep. Good boy, said his mother. You are a good sport. Good night, son, said the father's, the boy's father from the doorway between the two rooms. Keith did not answer. Instead, he breathed slowly and deeply, and as Ralph thought, a bit too noisily. There was no sense in overdoing things. As soon as all was quiet in the next room, the boy swung his legs out of the bed, fumbled around in his suitcase, and shone a flashlight into the wastebasket. Almost blinded by the unexpected light, Ralph held his paws over his eyes. Hey, cut that out! He could not remember to be polite. Oh, sorry, the boy laid the flashlight on the bed where its beam shone across the wastebasket rather than into it. That's better, said Ralph. Now, how about getting me out of here? As an afterthought, he added, please? The boy ignored the mouse's request. How would you like to ride my motorcycle, he asked. Ralph's heart skipped a beat like a motor missing on one cylinder. The mouse-sized motorcycle really would run after all. All there was one thing certain. Since the motorcycle really would run, the boy could not expect him to ride around the bottom of a waste basket. Sure. Ralph tried to sound calm. The important thing was to get out of this prison. He braced himself dreadfully, dreading the touch of the boy's hand on his fur. To Ralph's surprise, the boy did not reach in and grab him. Instead, he slowly and gently tipped the wastebasket on its side, permitting Ralph to walk to freedom with pride and dignity. Thanks, said Ralph, genuinely grateful for 
this consideration. I believe you're okay. Sure, I'm okay, said the boy, setting his motorcycle down beside Ralph. Did you think I wasn't? You never can tell. Ralph put his paw on the handlebar of the motorcycle. It's a real beauty. Even with a bent handlebar, I'm sure sorry about that. Forget it, said the boy, reassuring. It won't hurt much. The motorcycle will still run. Ralph threw his leg over the motorcycle and settled himself comfortably in the seat. Perfect, just perfect. The boy was obviously delighted that his motorcycle was just right for a mouse. Ralph could not have agreed more heartedly. It was perfect, except for one thing. He did not know how to start it. Well, go on, said the boy. Ride it. Ralph was ashamed to confess his ignorance. I don't know how to start it, he admitted. It's the first motorcycle I have ever had a chance to ride. You have to make a noise, the boy explained matter-of-factly. These cars don't go unless you make a noise. The answer was so obvious, Ralph was disgusted with himself for not knowing without asking. He can't grasp the hand gr the hand grips and fearful lest his noise to be squeaky managed a prrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr